Hi everyone. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a new topic called related rates. So this is gonna be a little bit different from the last few sections and actually probably like the last few weeks of this class. So recently we've been mostly working on different types of derivative rules, right? Different methods we can use for taking the derivatives of different functions in different situations. Um, and so today is gonna to be more of like an application of the rules that we've learned so far. Um, specifically, it's gonna be mostly an application of the of implicit differentiation. So why is this topic called related rates? I mean, if you think about you know, what, what would you think that related rates means? Well, what is a rate? A rate is a, an, quantity of change, right? How much is something changing as usually time goes on? For example, speed, right, is a rate of change. Or if a population is growing, you can talk about the growth rate of that population. And so rates are, are very much present in what we're doing in this class because when you take the derivative of a function, it tells you the rate of change of your original function. And so that's, that's kind of where the, the rates part comes in. And then what about the related parts? Well, um, what we'll see is that we're gonna be coming up with these equations that give you a relationship between different rates of change. And so we're gonna literally have rates that are related to each other in some way or another. So I wanna kind of just tell you like big picture, what is it that we're, we're gonna be doing here? We're basically gonna be given these problems, some of them are, are gonna be like more like word problems, some of them will be a little bit more straightforward. Um, but we're gonna start with a relationship between quantities. And when I say quantities, I mean like things like um, area and length and width, or side lengths of a shape or the volume of a box, or anything like that where, where you're um, writing down an equation that communicates some kind of a relationship between amounts. So just to give a couple of quick examples, a relationship between quantities might look something like area is equal to pi r squared, right? That's the relationship between the area of a circle and its radius. Or another example would be if you have a right triangle, we all know the Pythagorean theorem, which says that there's a certain relationship between the lengths of the sides of the triangle. Specifically, it says that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So that's what I mean when I say a relationship between quantities. And so our goal in these problems is to kind of start with a relationship between quantities and turn it into a relationship between rates of change, hence related rates. So how can you take a relationship between amounts, quantities of something, and turn it into a relationship between rates of change? Well, that's where derivatives come in. So to get from here to here, this is where we're going to differentiate. So remember, differentiate just means take the derivative. So that's kind of the, the big picture agenda of, of what we'll be doing in, um, in this section. So before we get into an actual um, example of a related rates problem, I just wanna show you the way that we'll be taking derivatives in these problems because it is a little bit different from some stuff we've been doing earlier. So um, basically in, in the problems that we're gonna be working on, we're always gonna be treating our variables as functions of time because we're gonna be having these situations where, um, so like for example, the, the first example we'll do in a few minutes says a circular puddle is expanding. So if a circular puddle is expanding, that means that its area and its radius are changing as time goes on. Or the next problem says a spherical balloon is being filled with air at a rate of, and so that's also talking about um, the, the volume of a sphere changing as time goes on. So in all these problems, time is gonna be a factor and it's gonna be kind of the thing that we're measuring the rate against. And so for that reason, we're always gonna consider the quantities in our questions as being um, functions of time. So 
let's let's start with actually this example a is equal to pi r squared and just kind of see like the mechanics of how we're going to take the derivative of an equation like that and then we'll put it back into the context of an actual um, like problem so i guess what are we answering here um how will we be taking derivatives in this section so the first thing that we need to know is that we're always going to be like i said um we're going to be treating all variables so for example in this equation here a and r would be the two variables right those are the things that are changing the area and the radius pi is just a number um, so we're going to be treating all variables as functions of time. And so how, what kind of derivative are we going to take? We're going to differentiate both sides of these equations with respect to time. So we're going to, I'll write that down and then I'll write a different way that you can think about that. So differentiate both sides um, with respect to time. And when I say with respect to time, that, that basically just means, so like thinking back to implicit differentiation, in those problems, we took the derivative with respect to x. So that means that we're basically considering um, t to be like our, our input, our independent variable. Um, and what kind of differentiation are we going to be using? We're going to be using implicit differentiation. And it's basically because we're, we're working with equations and we're kind of taking the derivative of both sides. And so that's the kind of situation where we're going to use implicit differentiation. So the most important thing and the thing that's probably like the, the trickiest to maybe understand, but, but it's really important, is um, every time we take the derivative of any variable, within our equation we're always going to be treating it analogously to how we treated y when we did implicit differentiation so remember like with implicit differentiation when you take the derivative of x you're just like okay whatever i'm just going to do a normal derivative but when you get to y you have to first take the you know normal derivative but then you have to multiply by y prime and so we're basically going to be doing that but it's maybe a little easier for these problems because you're literally going to do it for every single variable that you see in the the equation so within this implicit differentiation um, and let me think of how I want to say this so so basically because we're treating all variables as functions of time so every time you differentiate um, a part of the equation Um, involving a variable and I'm just gonna like literally draw a star here as kind of a stand-in for a variable so it could be a it could be R it could be a B or C I'm just writing the symbol star just to represent like any variable so whenever you differentiate a part of an equation involving some variable you always have to kind of use the chain rule the same way that we did in implicit differentiation and multiply by d whatever it is dt. So I know that that's probably a, like kind of confusing. I've, I've tried to think of different ways to say it. I think that's probably the clearest I can get, but I think when we'll do an example, it'll become a lot clearer. But yeah, so what I would just think of is think back to implicit differentiation. Think about the way that we took the derivative when y was involved. And we're basically just gonna be doing that exact same thing, except for that every single variable we encounter in our equation will always be multiplying by, instead of using like the prime notation, we're gonna multiply by dA dt or dr dt or ds dt or dv dt or whatever the variable is in that moment. Okay, so let's look at an example. So if we have the original equation, a is equal to pi times r squared. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides.
Okay, so what would the derivative of a be? So don't be thrown off by the fact that this is like a different variable than what we've been working with in this class. Just think about like, imagine it's a y or an x. The derivative would just be one, right? The derivative of x is one. The derivative of just a is one. Except that then we have to multiply that by dA dt. And that's just like how if you were taking the derivative of y using implicit differentiation, you would write one times y prime. So instead of writing a prime, we're writing dA dt. And if you really want to, you could write a prime instead. Um, the reason that I write dA dt is to really emphasize the fact that time is involved. Because especially when we get into like word problems, you want to keep in mind like the meaning of the stuff you're writing down. And I think writing the d dt part kind of helps you remember that. OK, so what about on the right-hand side? So on the right-hand side, we have um, pi. So pi is a, a constant, right? So because it's a constant, we can just take it out and, and not really worry about doing anything with it, right? It's like taking the derivative of 5x squared or something like that. You can just kind of pull that 5 aside. Same thing with pi. So what about r squared? So the outside part of that derivative is going to be power rule, right? We bring down the 2, we have 2 times r. But then, just like we did over here, we need to then multiply it by dr dt. So why are we doing this? Why are we multiplying by dA dt, dr dt? It's basically just the chain rule. So again, it's because we're thinking of a and r as being functions of time. And so this part and this part are like the outside derivatives, and then this part and this part are the inside derivatives. So it's just the same way how like implicit differentiation, you can think of it as being the chain rule. Same idea. That's why, um, that's why we're, we're doing this. And I think of all the ideas in this class, and I mentioned this in the, um, the implicit differentiation uh, video as well, personally, I think that's maybe like the hardest idea to fully understand. So you know, I, I think it might be one of those things that you might not really fully get to the bottom of understanding while you're in Calc 1. It might take a little longer for you to be like, oh, okay, now I fully understand that idea. But, you know, in practice, it's just that you're just always multiplying by d whatever dt. And you can just kind of remember that fact as part of this process. Okay, so here's our derivative, or here's our kind of, it, you know, notice that we don't have like y prime is equal to, we have a relationship between two different rates of change. So let's think about what these different parts of this equation mean. So dA dt means the rate of change of the area, right? dA dt means the derivative of a with respect to time. So we're th that, that basically means how is the area changing as time goes on? And then what does dr dt mean? That is the rate of change of the radius as time goes on. So it's going to be really important to be able to interpret dA dt and dr dt to be able to understand what those mean. Um, again, especially when we get into actually doing some problems with these. So altogether, we, what is this equation telling us? It's telling us a relationship between the area or sorry, the, the rate of change of the area and the rate of change of the radius. So now let's see how we would actually um, kind of answer a question similar to what we just did, but with a little bit more context. So let's say that we had a, a problem that said a circular puddle is expanding. So, you know, maybe it's raining and the, there's more and more water accumulating in this puddle. So specifically, it's expanding in a way so that its radius is um, increasing at a rate of two centimeters per minute. And so the question is, at what rate is its area changing with 
when the radius is 10 centimeters. So we basically already kind of set ourselves up to answer this. Um, and in a minute, we'll do an example where we kind of start from scratch. But we already basically did the work that we need to up here. So why is that? Well, because if you have a circular puddle, then that would be, that would satisfy a is equal to pi r squared, right? Because it's a circle. And so what did we do? We took derivatives and we ended up with a relationship between the um, rate of change of the area and the rate of change of the radius. And if you read the question, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for at what rate is its area changing? So I'll write back down what, what we have up here in a second, but I just wanna focus for a second on, on what's written here and kind of highlight a couple of things. So this tells us its radius is increasing at a rate of two centimeters per minute. So let's translate that into calculus, into derivatives. So the rate of change of the radius we can write as dr dt, right? dr dt is equal to two centimeters per minute. And then what else is going on here in terms of rates? Well, it says at what rate is its area changing? So how do you talk about the rate of change of the area? Well, that's dA dt. And we don't know what that is. That's what we're trying to find. And the units of that, because it's area, it would be square centimeters per, sorry, not second, minute. And then the last piece of information contained in this equation, or in this, sorry, uh, story, sentence, problem, um, is it says when the radius is 10. So that tells us that the radius itself, not the rate of change of it, just the actual radius is 10. Okay, so let's copy down the equation we have up here. So we figured out earlier that the ADT is equal to two times pi times the radius times drdt. So what we wanna do is basically put in the information that we, um, that we know and then solve for what we don't know. So based on what we wrote up here in green, we know, so we don't know what DADT is, right? That's, that was the, the mystery. Um, and then we have two pi, so those are just numbers. And then we know that the radius is 10. And then we know that DRDT is equal to two. And so this allows us to find DADT. We can say from this that DADT is equal to 40 pi square centimeters per minute. So we basically took this relationship that we had between derivatives and we just kind of plug stuff into it um, to, to get our final answer. Every time I put a box around my answer, it just really emphasizes the crookedness. But maybe it will also emphasize it if I try to compensate. Okay, there we go. Um, so one thing I just wanna quickly point out, and I'll, I'll point this out in some future questions as well. And sorry, I don't know why I wrote 20 here. I said 40 out loud and then I wrote 20. Um, so one thing that's really, really important in these questions is paying attention to this word when. So it says when the radius is 10 centimeters. So what that means is that you don't want to plug that 10 in until the end. So what's really important is that if there's specific information about the length of, or the, the area or anything in your question, um, that you wait to plug that in until after you take the derivative. And so I'll, I'll point that out in future questions as well, but um, I just wanted to quickly mention it. Okay, so we're gonna do a few more questions. Um, I have this one already written down, um, but the other ones I, I don't. So this next question says, a spherical balloon is being filled with air at a rate of 100 centimeters, or sorry, cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius changing when the radius is 25 centimeters? So I wanna, for this problem, kind of write out a series of steps that I think will be a good way to approach all questions in, in this section. Um, and 
Today, the examples we're going to be doing will be fairly straightforward, but tomorrow we'll get into ones that are a little bit more complicated. So I think especially in tomorrow's video, following the steps that I'm going to write out is going to become like even more important. Um, so the first step, and this step we're not really going to do on this one because it, it doesn't really help us, but in, in some future problems, we're going to want to draw a diagram. Let me use some color here. I was debating how to bring in the color, but I'll just do it now. Um, so first step is draw a diagram if possible. And in this, in this problem, you, there's not really much of a diagram to draw, right? You could draw like a sphere, but it's just gonna look like a circle. But we'll see again in some future questions that that will become important. Okay, so the next step we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to um, identify what quantities are changing in our question and assign variables to those quantities. So we're gonna to want to assign variables to the quantities that are changing in the problem. And for the ones today, we probably won't really see any kind of differentiation between what is and isn't changing, but in the future, we'll see some examples where certain quantities will be changing and other ones won't. So you really only wanna give variables to the things that are changing. So in this problem, let's think about what's changing. So we have a spherical balloon, so it's three-dimensional. And so that means that the volume of the balloon is changing, right? So we probably want to say V is equal to volume because the volume is changing. What else is changing? Well, the radius. So those are gonna be our two variables in this question. So the next step we're gonna do um, is we're going to write down an equation relating the quantities that are, um, that are changing. So, Usually in these problems, it's either going to be like in the last question, it was pi, a is equal to pi r squared. So it's going to be some kind of an equation, either coming from geometry or something along those lines. So we're going to write an equation relating the quantities from step two. So in this case, and this isn't one I would necessarily expect you to know, so I think if, um, if the question I'm giving you has to do with just like the area of a circle or the area of a square or the Pythagorean theorem, you know, those things I would expect you to know, but if it's, it's some kind of more complicated volume formula, I'll definitely give it to you. So in this case, the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So that's the volume of a sphere. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do um, is basically similar to what we did in the, the last example, which is we're going to differentiate both sides. Maybe I'm getting a little too happy with my colors here, but that's okay. with respect to t, time. So we're gonna take our equation and take d dt of both sides. Oops. So this one's actually gonna be pretty similar to the last example we did in terms of um, how the derivative goes. We'll do some examples in a little bit that are a little different. Um, but yeah, so this one, the derivative of v, well, the first part of that derivative is just one, right? Because it's not v squared, it's not sine of v, it's just v. So it's one times dv dt. So the next part, four thirds and pi, those are both constants. So we can just kind of pull those out front. And then the derivative of r cubed is gonna be three r squared and then we're gonna multiply that with dr dt 
to finish off our chain rule. So let's simplify this a little bit. So we have dv dt is equal to, so notice we have a three here and a three here. So we can cancel those out and we have four pi r squared dr dt. Okay, so um, next thing we wanna do is we wanna go back to our question, and let me see what color I didn't use yet. I did not use magenta. Um, we wanna go back to our question and we want to basically uh, write down the given information and the information we're looking for in terms of, um, of derivatives. So write down the given and the desired, so the stuff you're trying to find, um, rates of change. as derivatives. So as things that look like d star dt, right? d something dt. So going back to our question, um, it tells us that a spherical balloon is being filled with air at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. So what rate of change is that telling us? Well, it's telling us that the volume is changing at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second, right? Because um, there's a few ways to tell that. One is just think about, you know, if you're pumping air into a balloon, well, that means that its, it's volume is changing as you pump that air in. Another way to tell that its volume is because it's cubic centimeters. So cubic means three-dimensional space. And then the other part here is it says, how fast is the radius increasing? And so that tells us that we're trying to find the rate of change of the radius. So with that information in hand, so let's write that down here. So we just found out that dv dt is 100 cubic centimeters per second, and the dr dt is, we don't know, centimeters per second. So now what we can do is basically plug in that information as well as any other given information. So for example, we're gonna have to plug something in for r. Plug in you know, whatever information we have and solve for what we don't know. So we're going to plug in given rates and quantities and solve, I'll say and solve, solve for whatever you're trying to solve for. So let me copy our equation back down. We had dv dt was equal to four pi r squared dr dt. And so we just wanna put in what, what we have here. So we know that the, the rate of change of the volume is 100. We know that the radius, let me go back here, is 25. So we wanna plug in also r is equal to 25. So going back down here, we're gonna plug in um, 25 squared and then we have dr dt. So we're basically just trying to solve for dr dt, right? Because that's what, what, was, uh, what we said here. So um, by the way, in these problems, I would like you to put your answer in exact form when possible. So let's actually write this out in exact form rather than multiplying the pi into it. So um, we can divide both sides by four. That'll kind of clean things up a little bit. So let's just rewrite this as 25 is equal to pi times 25 squared times dr dt. Um, and then you could multiply out 25 squared, but actually maybe a, a faster way to see this is that you could divide both sides by 25. So maybe let me write on the side what we're doing here because it's maybe not super ob obvious, but the first step we divided, I'll write it here. 
Here we divided by four to go from here to here. And then this next step, we can divide by 25. So if you divide both sides by 25, you're left with one is equal to 25 pi times dr dt. And then we can divide both sides by 25 pi. And that is our answer. Um, and I guess we should say, we should put units in here. So, um, and the units were centimeters per second. So the last example we're going to do um, is going to involve actually using the product rule. So in this example, we say a triangle is growing. Not sure why, but let's just go with it. A triangle is growing um, so that its height is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second and its base is increasing at a rate of five centimeters per second. So it's, if you can imagine, that would probably mean that's getting wider as it goes, right? Because the the height is not growing as quickly as, as the base for whatever reason. So the question is, at what rate is its area growing um, when the base measures 10 centimeters and the height measures eight centimeters. Okay, so we're gonna break this down the same way that we did the last one. So the first step we always need to do is, um, well, draw a diagram if, if necessary. I don't really think it's necessary for this question because um, it's just a triangle. Uh, if it's just like one geometric shape, you don't necessarily have to draw a picture. We'll see tomorrow some examples though where you definitely do want to draw a picture. But for this one, maybe let's, let's skip it because there's not really much to draw. So the first thing that we want to do is identify what are the things that are changing in this problem and we want to assign variables to them. So we see that its height is increasing. We see that its base is increasing and we are asking what rate is the area increasing. And so that tells us that the, the quantities that are changing in this question are gonna be H, which is the height, um, B, which is the base, and A, which is the area. So those are the quantities that are changing, and so those are the ones that we're gonna to want to relate in our equation. So what would be an equation relating these three quantities? Well, the area of a triangle is equal to one half times the base times the height. So this is the area formula of a triangle. So that is one that I would expect that you would know. Okay, so, um, Next step is going to be to take the derivative with respect to time. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. And the goal is to give us an equation that will be relating um, derivatives instead of relating the quantities. So the left-hand side, we've already seen ones like that, right? So if you're taking the derivative of a variable that is not being raised to a power or is not being multiplied with anything else, you, it's, the derivative is just gonna be, in this case, dA dt. If you wanted to, you could write it as one times dA dt. Now on the right-hand side, um, let me actually, I'm gonna kind of 
write this in a, an extra step. So let's first pull out the, the one half, and then we're just gonna focus on finding the derivative of b times h. So to find the derivative of b times h, we wanna use the product rule, right? So we still have dA dt over here. So how does the product rule work? So we start by taking the derivative of the first part. So what's the derivative of b? Well, it's just gonna be one times db dt. Or we can just skip right ahead and say, okay, it's just db dt. Then we're supposed to multiply it with the second part, which is just h. Right, so just doing the product rule as we normally do. Derivative of the first one times the second one plus derivative of the second one, so that would be dh dt times b. Okay, so now we're pretty much good to go on, um, soon we're gonna just like plug some stuff in, but, but before we do that actually, let's identify in our question what are the, um, the things that are changing. Let's, let's rewrite them as derivatives. So going back to our original equation, we see that the height is increasing at a rate of three centimeters per second. So that tells us that um, dh dt is equal to three centimeters per second. We also see that the base is increasing at a rate of five centimeters per second. That tells us that db dt is equal to um, five centimeters per second. And then the question is asking us, what is dA dt? And the units for that will be um, square centimeters per second, right? And then the other fact that we're gonna have to make use of is the fact that the base measures, so the, the base is equal to 10 centimeters, and the height is equal to eight centimeters. But again, I wanna mention that we really don't wanna plug those in until the end because of this word when, right? Like the base and the height are changing. So it doesn't make sense to plug that in until you already have the derivative. It's kind of like if you're asked to find the slope of, um, of a tangent line at a certain number, you take the derivative first, right? And then you plug in the number. It's, it's basically that exact same idea. We're taking the derivative to find like a general relationship. And then once we have that general relationship, our derivative, then we can plug stuff into it. So let's go down to our equation and plug in everything that we just uh, wrote down. So we know that um, we, we're trying to find the area, the, or sorry, the rate of change of the area. So we'll just leave that there. Um, we found that db dt was equal to five. We found that at this moment, the height is equal to eight. So we'll put an eight here. dh dt was equal to three. So we'll put that in. And then the base is equal to 10. So I'll we'll plug that in for B. So this all together is gonna give us one half times 40 plus 30. So that is gonna be one half times 70, which is 35. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the rate of change of the area was equal to 35 um, square centimeters per second. So I'm gonna stop it here because it's getting uh, pretty long on this video, but I will um, make a worksheet with a few more examples. And like I said, we'll do more examples again in tomorrow's video. Um, I would really, really encourage you to do today's worksheet. I know that this video is long and so that together with the worksheet probably feels like a lot, but I just think that this is one of those topics where I think it's a lot easier to watch someone else do it and be like, oh, okay, I get it, than it is to do it yourself. So I think it's really important that you give yourself the chance to try these questions yourself. All right, I will see you next time.